All right, guys, what's up? Um, I think we got it for real this time. Haunted Honeymooners at gmail.com. Haunted Honeymooners on YouTube. Haunted Honeymooners on Facebook. Right now, Talking Scared, Episode 3. We're going to be talking with Sam. Um, Sam from the USS Nightmare. Um, phenomenal actor, phenomenal haunt going on at the USS Nightmare. They have several different experiences. If you're wondering about all those experiences, all you have to do is go back to our earlier reviews when we did a full review on the USS Nightmare and their rest in peace experience and everything that they had going on there. Um, very, very cool haunt. Very, very cool industry that they got going down there. Um, some awesome actors that they got inside the haunt. Some awesome effects with the haunt itself. Um, as far as a few different things that we have coming up here in the very near future, um, obviously an education in horror is still on full tilt. We haven't slowed down on an education in horror in any way, shape, or form. We're actually about to pick up the pace with it. So coming up next, we have Mothman. Um, that will be coming up very, very shortly. Um, and then after Mothman, we have Black Eyed Children. Before Black Eyed Children, we have A Killer Friday, which is still being voted on. We'll talk about that a little bit more before we get into the interview with Sam. Um, so we got Black Eyed Children, uh, several different things coming up after that. Um, we just went to Kings Park, uh, Kings Park Psychiatric Center. Um, really, really, really creepy place. Um, and we're going to try to do that more for you all and try to go to more places like that, try and see more things like that and try to do more things like that. Um, you guys really seem to like the abandoned aspect. You really seem to like the haunted aspect and the ghost aspect and, I know I said I wasn't going to do too much of that initially, but it's looking like it's leaning that way and that that's the direction that we're going to be heading here in the future a little bit more. Doing a little bit of a little ghost hunting, I suppose, um, and I'm cool with it. You know, it is what it is. We'll uh, tell you what, man, that was one of the creepiest things I've ever done. Um, really was. Uh, the music in that one room, man, was something else. Uh, it's, it's weird. It was weird. You're in a building. Um, it's 13 story building and you know, you could hear a pin drop in that place and just to hear somebody playing music up top, no matter who or what it was, um, whether it was a person, whether it was a ghost, whether it was a demon, whether it was just my imagination going full tilt crazy on me, uh, it's not, uh, it was different. Um, and then the experience that we had coming out of it, we talked about a little bit in the video, um, it genuinely, and I apologize for last night a little bit. We were very, very tired. So if that video didn't, uh, didn't seem to be quite what it usually is, um, here we go. I got him. I got him. I got old Sam. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more in a minute. We got Sam in just any, any second now. He is currently being added. What's up, man? There's the man. Yeah, no, no, sir. That's the man. That's the man. I'm just, I'm just a man blessed enough to get to hang around some really, really cool guys and some really cool ladies that I've been meeting throughout this industry. So welcome. Welcome. How are you? Doing all right. Glad to be here. Good. Good, man. Um, so we got a couple of announcements we're going to burn through real quick. Going to take all of about 30 seconds, and then we're going to jump right into everything to do with you. Um, obviously we are Haunted Honeymooners, hauntedhoneymooners at gmail.com, Haunted Honeymooners on YouTube, Haunted Honeymooners on Facebook, Haunted Honeymooners all over the GD place. Um, we got a website, should be coming very, very soon. We're hoping, we're very, very hopeful for that website to come very, very soon. Um, we're working on it. We have Mothman, it's coming out on the 15th of this month. We have a Killer Friday, our first uh, serial killer episode of An Education in Horror coming out on the 22nd. H.H. H. Holmes versus Joe Matheny. And I get it. Everybody wants H.H. H. Holmes, but Joe Matheny turned people into hamburger. I don't understand why H.H. H. Holmes is winning this. The other guy turned people into hamburger. How do you not want to hear about that? He fed people to people. That's in a really fucked up way. Super cool. Um, so anyways, we got that going on. We talked a little bit about Kings Park. It was our first real true abandoned uh, maybe, quote unquote, a little bit of a ghost hunt. Um, had some pretty cool experiences there. We're definitely going to be going back to Kings Park Psychiatric Center and doing a little more exploring there, checking things out a little bit more. Um, and that's just about it right now with what we have going on in the near future. We talked a little bit about a big announcement that we got coming up here 
in a few months, um, a little something special that we're working on for everybody, a little bit of a dream of Trish and I's, and we're pretty pretty excited to hopefully be be debuting this to you all um, here in the very, very near future, we're hoping. So anyways, moving on, Talking Scared, episode three, we're here with Sam. Sam is the best bartender on the USS Nightmare. Um, just depends on how well you play his games and how well you interact with him as to, as to what beverage you're going to be getting on that particular evening. Um, so Sam, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. How long you been in the industry, who you are, man. Uh, officially two years. Um, as far as being in the quote unquote official industry prior to that, I ran a bunch of ran or participated in a bunch of smaller end ones. It'd be like, you know, in high school, they wanted to turn up the school into one like seven, eight, nine years ago. And it was, Oh, you know how to do makeup. Why don't you do this? And other than, and that was kind of what started it. And then it was, Oh, the boat's hiring. So let's all go down there and see what we've got. And did that two years ago and just fell in love with it. So it's been every year since. Cool. Um, so we've tried with the first two to try to get a, uh, a little bit of a inside look into how auditions go. And both times it's kind of been like, yeah, we're not really sure. So here we are on the third time. Do you, did you have to audition to, to get on with the USS Nightmare? And if you did, what was that experience like? Not entirely in the sense that you might be thinking. Um, the audition process is more or less go down during one of their hiring days, fill out the paperwork, say what you want to do, yada, yada. Um, and then you're basically on, at which point you'll go to the big orientation with everybody and you'll have like the, I want to say it's like two, maybe three hours of the boat will go up one end of the river and back down. And during that time, they do little workshops of like, you know, here's scrap cards of random character. Disperse them out randomly in groups and somebody will play X, somebody will play Y, somebody will play Z. See how you do. Then change the cards up, see how that is. Um, it's not really an audition in the sense of how good you are at whatever they give you or you want to do determines whether or not you get the job. Um, in a very roundabout way of putting it, it's more or less they'll hire anybody and let the people who aren't cut out for it weed themselves out naturally. Okay. If that makes sense. No, no, that, Which, that actually makes, that, that seems like a pretty actually legit way of trying to do that other than I, I've heard stories of, of basically walking into a room and the owners kind of look at them and be like, all right, well, scare us. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I can't speak for other ones, but that's definitely how the, how the boat's done is to the best of my knowledge consistently. Okay. All right. Now, um, I don't know if you remember or not, but we had, uh, we had talked about, so you burned me on the first time. There it is. Cool. I did. So before we do this, um, tell you a little story about how Sam and I first met each other. <laughs> um, so when you go through the rest in peace experience, I don't want to give away what they got going on there too awfully much, but there's some different challenges that you're going to have to go through. And I had just happened to just destroy the first challenge. It was awesome. I dominated it. It was over before it started. So I get to Sam's little bar and <laughs> truth be told, I won your challenge real quick. Oh, you I thought did. you did. I, well, I, I won the dice game at least. And, and then, um, then found out pretty quickly that uh, I didn't. The dice really game is the game, my friend. The dice game is to make you think that you understand what the game is about. I love that you just did that so much. What's that? <laughs> that made me happy. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> one that we'll shot with you, one that's not, you know, your special concoction. So to you, sir, the world's best. <laughs> oh, I'll chug straight from the bottle, but no. <laughs> the world's best bartender. Toast to you, yeah, sir. my friend. Whatever, I don't care. It's a little back there. It happens. All right. So thank you for that, number one. And number two, I poured that shot myself. So you ain't getting me a second time, man. <laughs> so, but anyway, so the role as you're, the bartender. You're forgetting the possibility that your wife might be getting you. Mm, nah, I got I, I got her <laughs> on lock more than, more than she likes to let on. I've got her taken. She's handled that's you now you now if you'll remember that's the exact kind of attitude that got you burned in the first place <laughs> you're getting a bit too cocky a little too fast and that's not going to go terribly well for you <laughs> I, i'm telling you all if you have not if you're in the area of the uss nightmare and I, before i speak to my are you planning on being on the ship this year this year as 
at the mo- pretty much yes it's just going to be a question of finagling with my current job because if we're in the 60 plus hour weeks come haunt season that's going to be a fun one but i'll figure something out Hurt. wouldn't do me very good to establish a character and get a good reception for it and then not go back and do it yeah and i don't i don't want to talk bad about anybody that's on that ship at all but the most memorable moment that i had really out of almost the entire haunt season we talked about it a little bit um, you know, the impact that Alex had on us initially, um, man, you, you were right there with him. Um, when we look okay. back at the whole season, we genuinely think there's three things that we think back to that was really highlights of the year. Um, the basement and scare house was phenomenal experience. Um, the time that we had with Alex, um, at the dentist schoolhouse and everything they had to offer. And genuinely your room was one of the most fun rooms I've had in any haunt experience at all. Um, so I just wanted to, Kiss your butt a little bit. Tell you how awesome you are, and um, we're gonna move on from that. That was my little hero moment there for a second. I'm over it. Moving on. Um, well, thanks. So anyways, tell us a little bit about your room and the bar and everything that you got going on. Um, in the and, and he is he's he's exclusive. You don't get him just by going to the USS Nightmare. You got to be special, and you got to be going on a little bit of a different tour um, to get to see Sam. Um, he's on the rest in peace experience. So you're not you're not in each tour correct no only the rippers yep only cool the rippers i didn't know we were referred to as that <laughs> um so tell us about your room um, as much as you're willing to enlighten on it well it's less willing to moment i can um that particular the speakeasy room just came about um this past year part of the various renovations that they tend to do every year move the rooms around and whatnot um that actually used to be a closet that contained um an animatronic that would go up against, a, it was a body going up against glass, I think, if I'm remembering right. And they cleared her out or moved her for whatever reason and wanted to put something else in there. So they knocked it out and kind of just had the last idea of, oh, what if we had a little bar? We've got the guy, that, we've got the watchman downstairs who got drunk and wrecked the boat while we're going to get the booze. This is right during, you know, roughly Prohibition era, so let's make a little speakeasy. It was a little bit thrown together last minute. Not entirely sure at the beginning whether or not it was going to work. And then when we went in during the end of summer, I want to say it was August or July, we went in to basically see all the changes that had been made to the boat, and then we got to that room. And uh, it was daytime and whatnot, but they got everything dimmed and turned the lights out and the black light, and then the, you know, the symbols and whatnot all showed up on the walls. To which point I just immediately said, I want this room. Give me this room. <laughs> I, there, I can I can work miracles in this room. Just give me this room. Um, so it wound up working out that way. And they didn't really change too much. Um, but how it turned out from the end is a little bit different, just general placement and whatnot. But for those watching, it's you'll come in through a closet because it's a speakeasy. We've kind of just hobbled it in there. The captain doesn't know it's there. So we want to put it somewhere inconspicuous. So if you're a ripper, we'll pull you out of the general path that you're going through. We'll pull you in through the little closet door. And at first, assuming the lights are off in my room, it just looks like you're stuck in the closet. And But there's a it's not a wall, it's a curtain. So you push the curtain back and boom, you're in the room. Uh, you'll walk forward, foggy. I'm in there, I've got my little card table. I've got all my drinks and my whatnot behind me. We play a little game of uh, dice. In the event you happen to win my game when we play our little game of dice, you're going to walk away with the illustrious present of, of something I give you. I'm not going to tell you what it is. How was yours, by the way? But you'll get one of them, and that's only assuming you win. And then I'll maybe do a celebratory shot with you if I'm feeling generous. In the event that you lose, I'm going to take your soul, which is just becomes all kinds of complicated, especially if you've sold it already, because if you thought laws were bad up here, it's even worse than hell. So and then I'll do my whole routine that way. It goes dark. I get my scares in. In the event, I get a cocky heart reviewer. <laughs> I introduce him to the wall. Yep. And it's funny. Yep. Um, and then after that's all said and done, we do the scene, yada, yada. I can either send you back out the very same closet door you came in, or I can send you through one of my side doors, which just makes you loop through another scene again, which is, has its uses. Sure. Very cool. Very cool. And then, but uh, just yeah, for a room, for a room, for a scene that was kind of thrown together last minute, um, I had a lot of fun with it, and it's just better than I think everybody expected it was going to go. 
Yeah, it's it's it was the best room there, man. It really was. It's crazy that you're saying that that was the room that was thrown together last minute, and that was our most memorable room with you. Yeah, it was something else, man. He really, really carried it away with that. Um, so a little bit about the the William S. Mitchell, which is the the name of the boat that you know the original before it became the USS Nightmare. Um, it was a dredge ship, correct? And then it had a uh, had a big accident. Had several. There was several. just the one big one. Yeah, the I'm not going to get all the details right, which is shameful because my one of my other roles I play is the guy at the beginning that explains all of this. But um, yeah, there were various incidents and stories about it, some of which were you know folklore and just people, as you do, that just built up, built up, and then there were other ones where it would crash once and who nobody knows why. Then you had the big one of the quote unquote Mitchell, Mitchell massacre. Nobody died, but Bridges. Um, where the thing got ended up getting loose of its moorings, went down the river, and I want to say it went through, Was it, I want to say it was five bridges before they were able to stop it, and that just gave rise to all these various stories and whatnot about it, and then the boat got bought out in, I can't remember the year it got bought out, but it got bought out by B&B, &B, and then they turned it into a haunt, and then it was, oh, this already has this backstory, this already has real people that you can modify into basically being your haunt characters, let's run with it, and thus the USS Nightmare. Very cool. Very cool. And the uh, the wreckage on the ship, um, it adds a lot to it. I know it really messed with Trish. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, you, there, there, there's, uh, there's parts, and again, we don't want to give away what's going on in there. We want you all to go. Go see it yourself. Um, but there's parts where it almost feels like you're walking through water, and, and you, there's this almost a simulated shipwreck environment. And, I mean, the damn thing's a ship. It's on the water. So... <laughs> I mean, there's even that element of just, just being on top of water messes with you a little bit. Oh, so especially the wheel wells. <clears throat> but, oh, yeah, the the age of it definitely, and just the genuine nature of a lot of it definitely does add to it. Like all the crap on the front end, that's all rusting, but that's all real. That's all original. None of that's really been modified or any of that. And it just don't even need to do anything to give it that feel. It's just there. Nope, it's perfect as is. Um so it does have the, you know, the, 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 the Mitchell massacre and everything at, like that. Is there any, have you, have you experienced anything that you would consider paranormal activity on there or, or any stories of people that have had that experience? There, oh, there are stories from um, a lot more. You'll get more from the long time, the long, long time, you know, 10, 20 year veteran, just cause more time frame. Um, yeah. There are definitely stories people have. Um, I myself, I can't say I've experienced anything that I could consider paranormal that I couldn't necessarily explain away as I was really tired that day, flashing light, you know, that sort of thing. There's definitely been some weird stuff that I've seen, but nothing that I couldn't go, okay, that's, I haven't slept in two days, I'm in a room with strobes, that's probably all that was. Um, but I've got, I've heard stories of, um, my one guy, Steven, you would usually see him out front with the beard and the glasses as the ticket taker or whatever. Uh, he's had he's had stories before where he's seen um, disembodied feet walk past him and he thought it was a person. He gets up, there's nobody. Um, the, we've had stories of people seeing like silhouettes and, or shadows and whatnot following them. Turn around, they're gone or hearing voices. Again, I've not experienced any of this in my time there, um, but there's I've, there's definitely been a lot of different testimonies from people that generally all seem to not necessarily tell the exact same thing, but they tell it close enough that you can kind of go, okay, there there might be something here, but whether or not there is for me personally, I cannot attest. Okay. Very cool. I appreciate the honesty and the answer, man, too. It's, uh, I, I, I'm with you. Um, there's, uh, so we, we just got back from Kings Park and we had a little bit of an experience there. And, but it was the same thing. I could go, okay, JC, you do haunted stuff like this all the time. All right, you're constantly involved in this. It could have been nothing more than the wind picked up and your imagination just went crazy with you for half of a second. So I appreciate the realism and being able to look at it from both angles and say, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, but this is, you know, this is kind of how- Well, I'm not going to say something's, you know, end of the world, hellhole haunted when it's not. Then I'm Bobby Mackey's. Oh, that's, that's, that's so well stated, man. That's beautiful. I, I, I love There's it. a hole in the floor. It's got Satan in it. Yeah, I know. I, I'm with you. I agree, man. Some of these different, different ghost I hunters. I'll bet you Hoff is in that hole, though. <laughs> Possibly. It's just, it's crazy, man. Just, just anything. 
anything they possibly find, all of a sudden it's haunted, it's a ghost, it's this, it's that, and it's just it gets ridiculous it's after it, it takes it takes credibility away from everything. And you know, if you can't every once in a while look at something and go, there's nothing here at all, guys. It's clearly there's nothing here. You you lose credibility. If if everything's haunted, come on, man. That's just that's not it. So thank you. Thank you for the honesty, man, and, and appreciate that very, very much. Um, so moving on, moving on a little bit here. Um, so you talked a little bit about yard haunts and some of the stuff that you started off earlier um, in your career. Um, what is it like as far as the difference between working a yard haunt and I guess for lack of a better term for it, a commercial haunt like the USS Nightmare? The first and biggest one is just um, organization. Because, you know, the ones I was doing before, which, again, I mean, I was doing them, you know, junior and senior year of high school, you know, almost a decade ago. So doing it then, it was working with people my age. And a couple of them were into it. A lot of them weren't. And it was just kind of like, wasn't that they didn't have any enthusiasm for it, but it was less a case of we have to do this cohesively so it provides a cohesive experience and it's all encompassing and more just, I want to do this. Okay, go ahead. Um, and then after graduation for two years, yeah, two, maybe three years, I want to say they, they still did it and they would always call me back for, you know, makeup work and set up and, you know, here's where you stand while he distracts and here's your, all that. Um, and that I would honestly say was worse just because it was no longer people that I'd known for however many years and my peer group. Now it's, I'm telling a bunch of teenagers as an adult who don't want to do this or think they know you know, have it in their heads that they know better because they just do or whatever, you ha whatever the case is. And it becomes just like, okay, well, you guys can do X, Y, Z. No, I'm not going to do that. Okay. What do you want to do? Come up there and do, okay, whatever. So between that and just a couple of other little yard thing, I like that phrasing, by the way, yard haunt commercial. It's good. <laughs> um, that and other little yard ones I've done. The main thing with commercial is just organization. Cause it's once you've got a good, cohesive system for how everything's going to flow what's going to be where how the timing is going to be everything else kind of falls into place after that i think because okay. without that organiz that baseline of everything being organized you're not going to have a successful haunt so for me that's the big major difference i mean i can go on about the little things you know makeup quality effects quality goes way up the roof <laughs> yeah um, sure but the, but again it's just the main thing is organization just because everything else falls in place once that's established i think yeah. um but i mean that's that's really about it and plus i think also from like the acting side of it you've got you know people who are more in line with being you know proper actual actors either they come from a theater background or they do other troop stuff like i do ren fair stuff on this when it's ren fair season so it's coming into that and all that so you get people that have more of a background in it and can look at what they're doing a little more objectively and have a little bit more I guess, finesse with how they're doing it to where, like, if you say, okay, that was cool, but what if you tried X, Y, and Z? You know, they're not going to throw a fit at you. They'll go, oh, you know, cool. And it's the, the camaraderie and that's just a lot better than, from my experience, yard haunts, just because you're with people who know what they're doing a little bit more. Sure. That makes perfect sense. That makes absolute perfect sense. Um, so talking about costume and makeup and stuff like that a little bit, um, how long on average would it say, um, just talking specifically, I guess, about the USS Nightmare, um, would it take from you arriving there to you being rip roaring ready to be a bartender? For the bar scene, that's actually a very, very varied answer. Because um, when I originally, okay, well, frame of reference, usually I'd get called in about 5.30. Generally, the, obviously, the earlier in the boat in the boat you are, the sooner you got to be there. People in the front are going to be in there called in, you know, 4.30 to 5.30, somewhere in there. People that are at the very end, they're not going to get called in until like 7. You know, people could be lining up and they'll have one or two of the last, but very last people come in just because, you know, you've got that time. Since I was about the midway point for when I was in the bar, um, generally I'd get there about 5.36 and obviously had to be ready to go by about 7.00. Um, 7.15 at the latest, because open at 7.30, so you want to get in there and have time to get the scene set up. Um, the very, very, very beginning, um, it took probably the better part of an hour to an hour and 15 minutes to get me on, because at that very, very beginning of doing the bartender, I had a full face prosthetic, which, joy. Mm -hmm. um, and prosthetic <laughs> that thing on, and 
mm-hmm. you know, all that, making sure it was clean around the jawline. This was all soaked up, yada, yada. Takes a lot longer. Plus, you got to let it dry, take it off, unsticky it, put it on, do all that. Um, after a certain point, I'll have, to send, I'll have to send you the link to that because I still had that. That was the one I did when uh, Channel 9 came in to do a little go-through thing. And um, ta- I'll just say Taffy has his own Twitter account for that one post, and I'll just send that to you. But that was what uh-huh. that one was. And I did that for maybe two weeks, and I got to the point of, okay, this looks great. I love the look for it, but it's constantly falling off my face. I can't emote as well as I'd like to. Um, yeah. And it's just, and with all the fu- with all the drinking of various things that I'm doing, it's getting in here, and this is coming up, and it's like, you know what? I love this. Is there any way we can, like, snip it here so it just from cheek up? And it's like, yeah, we could, but then we'd have to completely redo the seam. I'm just like, you know what? No, screw it. Face off. We're just going to do dead guy. I'm just going to do face paint, symbols, voodoo dead guy, or whatever the case is. From that point out, I pretty much started doing my own makeup for the rest of the season for that. Well, for the rest of the season, um, just because it was like, I know what I need to look like to sell that scene. And it's easier for me to just sit in front of my little mirror and do it than to have whoever the, whoever I've got, whoever's chair I'm in for the night. If they're not familiar with me, with the character, having to explain in detail how, and it just takes up more time. So by the end of it, when I was doing my own, it only took me maybe 30 35 minutes just because it got to a point where I had a system of getting it on and boom, we're done. Um, plus it was just mostly paint and maybe a little bit of, you know, blood dabbles or whatnot. And that doesn't take nearly as long. Um, but yeah, it started out at over an hour for the bar guy. And then at the, at, towards the end, it was l- almost just a little over half an hour. So it wound up speeding itself up, I guess, but. Cool. It sounds like you got some talent in, uh, man. Just, just a really talented individual overall. I've, I've tried to paint my own face once. It was uh, it was a disaster. It was it, it was bad. It was, uh, there's nothing to prove. It was it was it was horrible. <laughs> uh, so uh, so that's that's cool because uh, I that's I can't do it for sure. Um, so that that's cool that you're able to do that. You're able to just bounce in and out of your character so so seamlessly just in this interview and stuff like that, man. It's very cool. It's a cool talent to have. Um, so you have any uh, any like pregame rituals? Um, anything that you do to kind of get yourself fired up and ready to do this? Uh, for going into the boat itself, not really. Because for me, it's like I'm not in the zone until I'm fully in everything head to toe. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it'll depend on what character I'm doing for whatever I need to do. Like, for if I'm the museum guy in the front, I'll just, you know, walk around that little area, look at the pictures, whatnot, read some of the, reread some of the things for the millionth time you know, sing along to music, whatever the case is, and that'll get me into him. For the bartender, it's literally just sit there in the room, inhaling the fog or smoke, if you would think of it from that sense, and just, you know, we've got that old big band and jazz playing, and it just, we're there. It, it's that quick. It's five minutes of just sitting in the dark and listening to the music, and it just suddenly, oh, we are suddenly down in New Orleans, and it's just all kinds of lovely. <laughs> but that it's it's it depends it's all different for each character that i've ever done but it's usually no more than just a quick little rerun around the room or whatever the scene is and that's it okay um and and you can correct me if i'm wrong but i feel like the the bartender's kind of been your favorite character maybe that you've had the opportunity to play or is there someone else or a different character that that even trumps the bartender I like the museum guy, but only on all he. The only t- thing that trumps it is museum guy. The very, the very, very first guy is the museum, but only on extreme nights because of a specific couple of jokes that I'm allowed to make. <laughs> all right. Most that mostly that involve the squirting uh, window. All right. There's a couple of specific jokes I can do on that that are. I mean, they're fun just to tell them, and as some creepy, decrepit old man, but they're just fun because of the reactions they get. So it's like, the, for me, those are more fun in the moment, but just as a whole char- a character on the whole, no, yeah, no, Bartender's my favorite one. Hurt. Tappy's my favorite one. The uh, the Extreme Haunt, man, we're uh, we're hoping to, to maybe experience that sometime um, here in the very near future, um, if that's something that's going to be going on next year or not or, or whatever. We're, uh, it's we are make different. so much damn money off of that. We do <laughs> right. so well with that. Especially now that we've gone from what we used to do, um, 
not last year, the year before, because it used to be it would be a regular night, and then the last, I think it was two hours, was extreme. This past year, the whole night was extreme. So that immediately changes the nature of the crowds that you're gonna uh-huh. you're gonna get. You're gonna get you know you're gonna get more veteran haunt goers that know what they're in for, that know how to behave and how to act, and can play along with it better. Um, I'm hoping we do we do that again next year because I mean it's insanely busy and you're just drop dead tired by the end of it but it's so much fun when you've got an entire night and you don't have to you know spend you know 75 percent of the night playing the normal pg-13 stuff and then tr- and then having to transition over into the r-rated material it's it just you just do it and it's so much easier and not as much of a mental strain to just do the gymnastics of oh wait i can't say that yet it's not 11 o'clock or whatever versus yeah. just be free reign yeah no, we, we, I, I, that's the more we've gotten into this stuff, the more we're really leaning harder towards the more extreme side of things and the immersive side of things and everything. I mean, the walkthrough haunts are always going to have their place. Um, there's absolutely no doubt about it. Um, that, that, that is haunted houses, in my opinion, and always will be the center kind of foundation of what everything else is built around. Yeah. Um, you know, is, is that original concept, but man. If you've never been to an immersive haunt or, or an extreme haunt, man, you don't know what you're missing <laughs> at all, at all. It's 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 just your own personal horror movie um, for a second, and it's it's very very cool. And if you're able to get in that mindset and let it go, and just let let people like him do his job, you're gonna have a blast. It's when you try to show how cool you are and stuff like that that all of a sudden you've just wasted your money. <laughs> And just giving us some, and just giving us more more ammo for the fire. Uh, no, it's your own personal horror movie, unless you get a New Orleans, you know, demon voodoo guy. Then you're in your own Disney movie. It's a shame I couldn't turn you into a frog. <laughs> that is true. That's true. But I'm glad you didn't, man. I do appreciate you not turning me into a frog and and just going the route that we did go. Um, that was bad enough. I but know, you might not, you might not have thrown almost thrown up if you were a frog. But that's the thing. I didn't throw up. I held it down. Almost. Almost. <laughs> Almost. Um, you, did right, better than, you, you did better than a couple of other couple other guys. I'll say that much. It's just so unexpected. <laughs> you just... Point. I know. It's just so unexpected. But anyways, um, all right, so moving forward a little bit. Um, in some of the hunts that you've done, have you found it easier to act kind of in a scene all by yourself, or is it easier when you got a couple other actors to maybe play off of? depends um you know for scenes like the bar i like do i it's not that i don't like having other people for the most part i do but in scenes like you know the bar or most of the museum or at least the first half of the museum before you get to the box guy or just smaller rooms that don't have a lot of maneuverability that don't require a lot of exposition i will i'll answer that one as soon as i'm done with the one i'm on now um but, you know, if I'm in a small scene where I don't have a lot of maneuverability or, you know, there's not a, they're going in or coming out in the same direction or, you know, I've only got X amount of time and I have a specific spiel I've got to get through, then I kind of prefer to do it by myself just because, you know, I know I can trust myself to meet the time frames and ensure that the scene gets what it needs and having another person, yeah, you can bounce off of them and it'll be fun, but that can add on to it and detract from the time, which in turn can bog up the intended, you know, experience for that room or whatever. Um, but for bigger room, but for bigger scenes, especially if it's a scene where there's multiple places to hide. Oh, absolutely. Give me anybody. I mean, it doesn't matter entirely matter to me if they're a veteran or a brand new one, I'll work with it, you know, cause I mean, I've had ones that, you know, my personal favorite one down there is uh, on the boat is a friend of mine named Kira. I normally I'd say, Oh, she's the, nurse with the de- with the yellow slara but she got moved around a lot this year so i don't know if you saw her in there um you pr- probably recognize her by face but out of everybody i've ever worked with down there and this is saying quite a lot because there's been some good ones um she is my favorite to work with just because she and i do scares in largely the same way to where i'm not going to jump out and scream at you you're just going to turn around and i'm going to be there you won't see where i was you won't see me move you won't hear me move i'll just be there so having that kind is good, but on the flip side, if I've got, you know, an actor that's more boisterous and can, you know, high energy, I can do high energy or while they're distracting, I'll drop from the ceiling or whatever. And again, you won't see me coming or the inverse can also be true. I mean, it's, it largely depends on the scene 
and by extension the characters for me but it's you know if i'm in a scene where i can have somebody else to bounce off of and make the scene more you know immersive and unique for every group or person that comes through then oh god yeah by all means it definitely changes up the staleness of it from us as well as you know regulars that come through and oh it's this again it's like oh now there's a new person and they're upside down on the wall changes things up that way so it really all depends on the scene i'm not adverse to it it's just for smaller more tighter scenes i generally prefer to do it alone just because it's a little bit easier to manage um yeah. as for that one <laughs> Not all of them, some of them. <laughs> no, but almost. Have you ever um, have you ever slipped up and given yourself the wrong one? No, because no, no. Uh, I actually love apple cider vinegar, so it's a win-win either way. <laughs> all right, of course, of course you did. Uh, all right, I'll so go, uh, I will go get a bottle right now. <laughs> I go believe a bottle. I, I, I believe a full oh, here, here, here. Frame here. For frame of reference, when we all did one, that's what I had. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Generally, so, um, if I, generally, if I know if I'm going to get a good one like that in, and I know that they're going to be like, oh, you mother bastard, I'll do one too so I can be fine with me. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. All right. Um, so, uh, looking at yourself as just a guest going through a haunted attraction, um, we met up with you, obviously. At a different haunt a little later on in the season. That was yeah. pretty cool. Um, that was uh, that was that was super cool actually, getting to talk to a couple of different people from there. Um, but uh including that one, is there a haunted attraction out there that you love going to as a guest that you would say that's the my my favorite one to go experience myself? I absolutely loved St. Rita's before it went down. Okay. Um Dent I love. It's not a super character immersive one but this the set pieces and a lot of the props are just absolutely gorgeous yes, so i love that um i love our boat but i'm can't really say that without sounding biased um it's all right though it's a it's a it's a great haunt man it's it's a very good haunt i mean there's nothing if it sucked like, like some of the other well yeah well it's movies, just it's i'll be the first, i could be the first one to be x y and z could use work i just it feels a little bit self-congratulating to be like oh yes the one that i am at <laughs> um, so but I, I do i do enjoy going through the boat as a guest um even though i know where everything is but it's still fun cause just because the boat does have a lot of the boat has a lot of things similar to dent where it's just kind of like you got to go through the hallway but in the same vein it's just kind of like the hell was that on the shelf i want to go back and look at whatever that was mm -hmm. that and i and I, I really value that in haunts um as cheesy as it is i the there's a certain appeal to Scarefest that I like, even though I can't really even call it a proper haunt. Okay. It's just goofy fun. Um, Land of Illusions fun. Land of Illusions fun. Um, oh, it's huge. Huge, whole bunch of different things. Definitely worth the go. Um, I can't say I've been to too many d other ones in the past couple of years just from, you know, work and not having time, but... Yeah. Um, most of the, most of the big ones everybody knows around here are, you know, they're, they're good. They're worth the price of, I think worth the price of at least standard admission. Cause they've all got their things that they, that they do really well and things that they don't do as well, but the things they do well, they're usually good at. So all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I like what you said about the dead schoolhouse too, man. They're, uh, it's not this, it's, it's far away from the scariest haunted house I've ever been to or, or anything like that, but the attention to detail and how they set up every single room almost has its yeah. own story without them having to say a word to you about it. Oh, dude, that crypt thing, that crypt with the vaulted ceilings and the ossuary they've got downstairs, it's some of the best set pieces I've ever seen in a haunt. But it's, that I think the best way I can describe Dent is Dent is, Dent is not likely to make you scream or jump. No. Well, maybe jump. It's not going to make you scream. Dent is like that little background detail you see in a horror movie that you go, that means something. I don't know what that means yet, but that means something. I want to know what that means. And I love that. And, and that's and honestly, I think, harder to do than getting people to jump. Yeah. And, I mean, that's really that's a really good point. So you, you, you said uh, it's not going to make you scream, but it's going to make you stop and think. The room with the, uh, the porcelain dolls, the life-size porcelain oh dolls. Oh, my God. I love that room. I did, too, I man. Knew there was... some, but I didn't know which ones. That's I how, know. That's how good it is. Yeah, 
that that was I stopped in front of that he room. He was hesitant. And and it was probably really thinking back one of the very few times that just the the sight of a room made me just stop for a second and go, man, there is there is an asshole in there somewhere. <laughs> it's gonna pop out of there. And well, the part and, that impressed me is how, I mean, because you can get a costume on that makes you look like a mannequin, but to stay that still, yes. that's hard to do. That is so hard to do. The the um, first time I went the, through. The, the sheet, cha- the one where they where they dress up, they act like they're a chair with a sheet over it, and then they jump up and it's not a chair. Yep. It's brilliant. Mm-hmm. Brilliant ideas there. There was a, there was a scare, um, and scare, just kind of referring back to that, there was a lady that was in a sleeping bag, a scare house um, up in Pittsburgh, and she just laid so perfectly still the whole time, and it was a lights out tour too, so you, you, I was kind of taking oh. the up on her a little bit. And looking at her, and I thought for sure she was fake. And got up to her face, man, and that girl jumped up out of that sleeping bag and screamed at me. And it was the only moment this year that I jumped back. I was just, <laughs> shit! <laughs> uh, I, need to find t- I need to find time to get up there this year. I've heard yes. so many good things. Yes, you do. We're giving away free tickets to the basement this year. You can go with us. Throw a little, for a little cheap promo out there real quick in the middle of all this. Uh, Shameless plug! Shameless, I mean, I'll throw them all out. I have no shame. No shame at all. Um, He'll throw them like he threw back that apple cider vinegar. <laughs> yes, I will. I certainly will, and I'll keep them down, too. Um, <laughs> but anyways, so haunted events, haunted attractions, people that love this stuff. Sometimes we get a little bit of a bad stigma from, I guess, quote-unquote normal society a little bit. Is there anything that you would like to say in reference to that, or if you or if you were able to talk to somebody that looks at people like us and goes, that's insane, I can't believe you all are involved in that, that's sick, I don't get it, I don't understand it. Is there anything that you would like to say in aspect to that or to that particular community that looks at us like well, that? Generally speaking, I, don't, I, I like to avoid unnecessary conflict where I can. Um, and I don't, and again, in the same vein, I don't like being a dick where I don't have to be. But in that particular vein, I've got to kind of turn that on a little bit because it's, you'll watch horror movies. Take horror out of the equation. You'll watch regular movies, which contain actors who are paid to play a part and do their role to tell a cohesive story. Sometimes not cohesive, but to tell a story. You don't have any problem with that. And you can even go watch horror movies that do the same thing. So why is it suddenly an issue when it becomes live? Functionally, it's the exact same. You have paid actors in scenes playing characters to tell a story. The only difference is, is you don't have to sit for two hours to go through the story. You can go walk through it. Mm-hmm. I think that, that that's functionally the only, for, I see as the only difference. I think that it only becomes an issue with people because they don't necessarily have the, the buffer of the screen, if that makes sense, to where it'd be like, that's in a movie. You know, that's not real. And it's not real for us either but when it's this close to you it's a lot different than when you're sitting you know 80 feet away from a screen in a theater yep i agree with that completely i agree with that completely. and it's and, it's, and i don't say it and i don't want to say it to you know it's not gonna be an ass or whatever because it's you know if the haunts aren't your thing you don't get it you think it's sick or gross hey that's fine that's you're entitled to that but it just as soon as it becomes an issue of you know this is wrong or needs to be you know, stamp down or whatever the case is, it just fall back to previous argument. Whereas it's going to a horror movie, but it's live. Whereas you can't have a problem with one and not the other. So it's. I agree. That's very well said. That's very well put. That's, that's uh, uh, no offense to the other two that we've talked. That's probably the best answer we've gotten to that question so far. That was very well said. Um, so the USS nightmare is, is uh, I, I would, you know, it's a little bit more of an immersive experience than what you're going to get on some other haunts, especially if you're a ripper, right? Um, get one of these. Uh, I, say, I, I know you. I know you've said in past ones in in the the boat review you've got on YouTube. Um, you you weren't trying to ruin. You weren't trying to spoil a lot of it. Um, I don't have any problem advertising the gen, the gist of the the rip experience from from our side of it. Um, if you if you'd want me to do that just so it's out yeah, there. Absolutely. Go right ahead. Um, so basically what you do for the, for the RIP, uh, we just call you rippers because, you know, when our staff are going through going, oh, the, you got the group of rippers coming. That's the only difference in the term. Um, you know, you pay a couple extra bucks on your ticket. Um, 
it's what I'll tell people at the front door when I'm in the museum is it'll, you know, if your oh, regular tour is about 30, 35 minutes or so, when you get Ripper, that'll extend it by anywhere from five minutes to 15. Usually it's five to 10, but if the clowns want to cycle you through the maze a while, you'll get another five minutes out of that easy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you get to go through, you get to go to a whole bunch of uh, secret rooms and areas that regular guests don't get to see, myself being one of them. Um, you get to play little games and have more hands-on experience with things that, again, regular guests don't get to do, but they might get to see. So, you know, you'll have the one instance where, um, well, they did, they did away with this one and changed it up a little bit this year, but the year before, uh, when they first did the RIP thing, remember how you had to dig through the thing to get the key? Yes. That used to be down in the boiler room where all the where the army guy is by the where all the distillery and whatnot equipment is, and it would be what they what it used to be is they would snag somebody from the group who was a ripper and th take them away from the group through that little back door and throw them in that little corner cage and you had to dig for the key to get them out. There's no key that's going to get them out, but it gets you there for a couple minutes. And if you had regular people coming through, um, you know, I mean, I want to say one or two of them one times would also try and find the key but usually it would just be we'd get them in we'd make them point and laugh at the guy in the cage etc cetera, etc cetera. um and we don't we don't do that one anymore because they kind of split those up um but that's the kind of thing you'll do is now actually now the dig for the key thing is in a big cage with a sparker so and you'll have regular guests that can go down past you as you're doing it um and you just a whole bunch of stuff like that where it gives you a couple extra minutes as the ripper to do something special have a more hands-on interaction with the actors and the characters that the regular guests aren't going to get to, but then the regular guests will also go by and can participate from a distance and while also getting to see, here's what you missed out with by getting the standard ticket. And man, we've actually had not an egregious amount, but we've definitely had cases where people have gone through once standard ticket, seen the Ripper stuff, gone right back to the front of the line to buy Ripper tickets and gone through as Ripper's in the exact same night. So, I mean, it's, I, I would say it's definitely worth that if people are willing to pay a little over double what they were originally thinking just to go through the rip experience. I mean, it's worth but it. I, I think, I think it is. Cause I've, I've gone through both times um, as a guest doing it well, as an actor guest, but, and then I've done multiple scenes where I'm doing the ripping and it's just, it's so much more fun for us as actors because it's, we get more than, you know, 30 seconds to interact with you. We can, we can personalize our spiels. We can banter back and forth. In your case, you can lose them, but. I don't know if I completely you know, lost. I just... disagree a little bit on that. I think, I think I, maybe I've won a little bit. No, you won a wooden token is what you won. You didn't win the battle of wits, my boy. Still got your token. I had a feeling you would. <laughs> that's all right <laughs> it's my little my little victory piece i still i got the token so uh, like 50 50 maybe right 50 50 my dear fella i've got the box that they all come in <laughs> <laughs> all right i take so, i take something from my scene every year don't tell the bosses <laughs> gotcha i got gotcha, you man that's cool um so talking a little bit about immersive haunts um we, we spoke about it for a minute um, I, I personally feel that the walkthrough haunt is always going to be the core construction of it what everything the haunted houses are. But the immersive haunt, places like uh, the Shock Theater that we just got out of. Um, yeah, how was that? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in just half a second. That, that's that's right up next. We're going we're going we're going to touch on Shock Theater just a little bit. Um, but you know, scare house, the basement, uh, blackout. If they are still around or not around or whatever the hell's going on with them, they had a reputation for what they were, and really brought a different type of haunt onto the scene, um, excluding McCamey Manor because we don't even talk about them. That's that's asshole stuff. We don't really feel is even a haunt. How do you feel about the rise of the immersive haunt in the haunt community, and and maybe your opinion as to what's bringing that on? Because it's definitely on the grow. It's, it's getting bigger and bigger each year, it seems. Yeah. Um, I mean, for just how I feel about it, I love it. Um, I just, I love that. Go, we'll go back to what you said before. You know, the standard walkthrough and it's spooky. That's, that's your baseline. I would never want to knock that or say anything bad about that. But, you know, there does come a point in, you know, general whatnot where it's, not that that becomes obsolete, but you start, people will generally start craving more, you know, as, you know, horror media outside of this gets more intense and more 
you know, psychological and all this other things that we're getting. I mean, just look at some of the, you know, the whole quote unquote horror films we've gotten this last couple of years. You know, we've had like Get Out, um, Annihilation, which I can't really even classify as a full horror movie, but it's definitely, it gets you thinking and that bear scene is incredible. Um, it, you get stuff, you're getting a lot more stuff where it's less about got scary guy with the knife and more diving into this part of it, the psychological, um, and really just less horror where it's about the thing it's, or whatever the monster is and more the why of the monster or the how of the monster. Um, and I mean, you're still getting your stabby eyes and whatnot, but it's uh, the horror media is changing to a point where we're asking more and more questions of, I'm going to need more than a guy in a rubber suit to scare me. You know, I want uneasy situations. I want situations that could possibly be plausible for me to believe I might find myself in, et cetera, et cetera. So as that changes, I think people's perceptions of what becomes scary is changing. Cause like you go back to like the 1930s, Bella Lugosi is Dracula, you know, um, the Frankenstein, uh, Boris Karloff's Frankenstein, the Imhoteps. Nowadays, it's like, yeah, they're still great films, but they're kind of tacky and a little bit campy. Back in the 30s, they were terrifying. And you look at it now, and it's changed. And it gets, it, I think there's a natural progression that more and more things change of what we find scary. So as every other bit of horror media changes to where, you know, they're wanting a more immersive, you know, fear experience that's not just, wow, I have a knife, you know, piano chords, orchestra strings that haunts are naturally going to start reflecting that because it's obvious what people are going to want more of that's going to give them that thrill ride. So when you have an immersive haunt, it becomes less about, ah, jump scare, okay, go to the next room, and more, well, ah, jump scare, now find the other guy that I was distracting you from. Or in the case of me where there's not really even a jump, or the other people in the book where there's not really even a jump scare, where it becomes a case of, you know, for the clowns, or it'll be like, okay, the, this one seems nice, but they don't seem too killy, but that's not, they're still a clown on a crazy boat. Or in my case, as you yourself said, starting off perfectly calm, perfectly, perfectly calm and monotone, making you, you know, writing you in, making you think that I'm just here to be your friend. And then as soon as I've got you in my sights, we've got you where we want you. <laughs> it, just the immediate changeover. I mean, because you even went on for a couple of minutes, I think, about, about that in your YouTube review about the impact that that had on you as it was just like that out of nowhere that I don't think would have been received in the same way if we were in a different time period for horror. So, you know, again, naturally as horror changes, haunts are going to change to reflect that. And I think at the moment in time, we're at a point where it's people want more immersion. People want to be able to, you know, look around and go, Oh, I wonder what the story behind X, Y, Z is. Why is his face cut up? Why is she missing an arm? Why does that baby have nine heads and three tails and a pitchfork sticking out of its scrotum? It just whatever the case is, <laughs> you know, it's people who want to know more the why of things and the psychological, I think the psychological aspects So haunts are just going to naturally start reflecting that. And I think it's great because for me as an actor, there's only, there's a certain point when going boo stops being rewarding yep. and, having more immersive fleshed out characters that have actual backstories and like motivations like, Oh, I can get into this and do something different and not get bored with it every night. So, and I think that's the part that's reigning more people in to want to do at haunt acting for it because it's just more rewarding as an acting gig. So it's, I just think it's just a natural progression of things. Yeah. I think I'd say again, I, I know I said it before, very well said um, as to, as to how that is and, and everything like that. Um, so obviously we, uh, we just got back from shock theater, <laughs> um, and did their, uh, did their blind date experience. Um, it is an experience for sure. Um, we are, I'm, I'm at a little bit of a conundrum here because we, we try very hard and I think we do a pretty good job uh, of doing decent reviews in our walkthroughs of the haunt. And I would say this, so. one, this one in particular, man, it, uh, it's so secretive, and and the thing about it is, is I'm still to this point not even fully sure what it is they did to us while we were in that room with them. Um, it's uh, it, it wasn't it wasn't terrifying or or scary necessarily in the sense that you would think about it. Like I wasn't trembling or anything like that, but the mind fuck they played on us was insane. Um, 
it was by far the most um, aggressive thing I've ever been through and not aggressive in the sense of a uh, uh, in your face screaming violent type of thing. Right. They they parked their car directly inside of your head and said, cool, we're going to hang out here for a little while and see what your limits are. Yeah, um, it's not that the actors and not that I've been, but just it's not that the huh, is aggressive. It's that the atmosphere that they place you in mentally is aggressive. Yep, it really is. It's it's unlike anything that that I had ever experienced up to this point, uh, basement included. Um, the basement puts you in some weird situations and some awkward moments. Nothing like what shock theater does to you. Um, and, and I won't, it, I can't wait to go back and, and go to a different experience and see what else they have to offer. Um, just phenomenal. But I'm um, looking at something like that, something that, I mean, they don't even fully classify themselves as a haunt. Um, but Which is a great at, sign. <laughs> uh, but when you look at that immersive theater experience, um, has there been any ones that, that you've done um, that's, you know, apart from the one that you play in, obviously, um, have you been through any type of immersive experience? And if you have, how was it? I mean, not counting going through the boat, obviously, because I already know how, where everything is going to be and whatnot. Um, I can't say that there's been any truly immersive in that, you know, context that I've been to in probably the last four or five years, just again, time scheduling, just not working out. Um, I would say it, again, going back to St. Rita's, it was, they were great in like the, the, you know, the atmosphere and dread building before they unfortunately folded. Um, I almost want to say that not the entirety of it, but there were a couple scenes for me at Dent that gave put me kind of in, like, the mindfuck situation you're talking about. Not in the sense that it, like, you know, had me freaking out or whatever, but definitely had me in a sense of that scene was in my head for, for like, a, two or three days afterwards. Not in the sense that it, like, freaked me out or whatever. It was just kind of like, what the hell was all this? Mm -hmm. uh, again, that ossuary, one of them. Um the not the mannequin room but the like little kid doll room where they're the, you know they were piled up all of the cool that was another yeah. one um i mean there were a couple ones like that where it's you know it's not screwing with my head in the sense that i'm terrified of it or it's freaking me out psychologically but definitely left an impact as far as thinking about whatever the you know fictitious or whatever history behind that scene is um which I think is kind of in the vein of what you're talking about, just from a different kind of angle. But in the explicit sense you're referring to, um, <laughs> unfortunately, no, not yet. Um, Scarehouse and Shock Theater are ones I'm wanting to go to change that. <laughs> I don't think explicit even describes what happened at Shock Theater, man. It was something else. Without getting much away until we do a review or whatever, very sexually charged. Oh, man, I don't even begin to describe Better it. Better or for worse? <laughs> It is. These uh, are the important questions. Yeah, it's uh, whoo. <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, there, there's things in there I never thought I would do, but turns out they got it on camera. So you know, it, it's that. How, how do you know they have it on camera? Do they show you at the end oh, to make you feel you guilty? About it. Yeah, they they tell you nice. all about it and and everything That's else. That's awesome. And they're gonna send me some of the materials here in a few weeks. There's times during like, you're blindfolded pretty much the majority of the experience, um, at least for this particular one. But there's right. times where you know for sure that there's a camera just inches from your face. You can just kind of feel it and everything yeah. else like that. And they're very open about it. That they're filming everything from the get-go. And it's um, they, they have some stuff of me on camera that if you're watching it all, Shock Theater, or you see it, man, maybe, maybe we keep that between us, okay? <laughs> a couple of things that happened in that room that I don't necessarily want to talk about anywhere else or at any point in time what happened in the theater stays in the theater <laughs> it's going to <laughs> for sure um all right well we're gonna wrap it up here with one last question man um and it's kind of an open-ended question for you um kind of let you uh have a moment to say whatever you want um you know to the haunt community to the haunted honeymooners and and, and the and the, the people that we have following us 
and anybody else in the hunt community, if there was one last thought you could leave them with, one last thought from the best bartender on the USS Nightmare, what you got for us, man? Well, first, I'd like to thank the Academy. Um, <laughs> well, here, I'll just go in order then to, I guess, the haunt community at large. Uh, haunt goers, rather. Um, I know waiting in the lines is a pain in the ass. I know sometimes you've got shitty days and you take it out on us a little bit. We're used to it. Keep coming in. We do this for you guys. It, it, well, partly also for ourselves. It's great stress relief. Where else can I yell horrible, horrible things about what I, how badly I want to murder people, two people, and not lose my job over it. It's great. I don't even need therapy. Um, but no, we do it for you guys, because it's fun for us to do. It's fun to scare the crap out of you. It's fun to banter with you if you're not going to get scared, because my rule is always, if I can't make you scream, I'm going to make you laugh. There's not a question. Um, you know, so just keep coming in, even if it's ridiculous and you don't want to stand in the line and it's freezing cold. We love you for it. Even if we say we don't in the heat of the moment, we, we <laughs> really do. Uh, unless you're a special breed of ass, but if you're one of them, I'm, this doesn't even apply to you. Or alternatively, come in anyway, because we love getting ones like you. It keeps us on our game. But everybody, keep coming in. We love you. We do it for you guys. Um, for other haunt, for haunt reviewers in general, come in more. I love you people. <laughs> I love you people because you know how the game works, and some of you are really good at bantering to try and get us to break. You didn't come close with me, but I've seen you. I saw you come close with other people. Yeah, you didn't. But I saw a couple. I did see you come close with a couple other people, and it's. I love having that because even if I'm not gonna break, even if you stump me or anybody, we might not break character. But it's. Oh, I gotta think up a line on the spot. I love having improv games like that with people, and there are no better people than haunt reviewers because nine times out of ten, you're not gonna scare them. They can guess what your lines are going to be, and they're going to try and throw you for a loop. And me personally, I absolutely love that. Um, it's it's some of the most fun I've ever had because now it's just like, cool, I don't have to do this same thing I've done 314 times a night. Now I've got to have a pissing match with this guy over whose cape is better or whatever. It's, I love that. Um, to you two in particular, you guys are great. Um, the passion, I, I just, I love the passion, especially for, don't take this as, a, as an insult, but amateur in the sense that you're still up and coming and formulating yeah, yeah, um, it just i love the enthusiasm you guys have not just for going to haunts but just this kind of thing in general definitely shows especially with there's a spooky thing get the camera we're going yeah i, I love I, I love that it makes it's it's the, that's the kind of guest that i love to see when i've got people with at the boat because it's i, I don't like seeing people necessarily that are going to react or banter with me over my favorite people that i will ever see on the boat are the people that after they've left me or they're just walking through an empty hallway they're stopping to look at what's on the walls and the little things in the jars and talking about that i get maybe one out of every 20 or 30 people that do that beyond a passing glance and i love it every time it happens and i'm glad you two were, were two of them um so you guys are awesome at what you do you rock keep on rocking um to i guess everybody watching Support these two because I think they can make it big, but I don't think they need my endorsement to do that. It's just a matter of question of time. Um, other than that, for everybody, come on down and get your asses down onto my particular boat at the USS Nightmare. I'll foot you up a fancy drink. It may or may not be apple cider vinegar or some other terrifying concoction that I've made up for you. But I can guarantee you one thing, my dear, dear little lords and ladies, is... We are going to scare the ship out of you, and it's going to be magnificent. So come on down. Thank you so much, Sam. You are an amazing, <laughs> amazing human being, amazing haunt actor, and I look forward to having more conversations with you in the future, man. And um, and hopefully uh, we got a lot going on next season, but we are definitely, definitely trying to come up and um, and see you at least one more time next year. Well, I'll put it th I'll put it this way. Every year as a as an employee, I get two free passes. Give me a date and time this upcoming year and they're yours. Awesome. All right, we'll be there. We'll be there for sure, man. Sam, I bow down. Thank you so much. Have an absolute yeah, I got you one more time. Hold on. Hold oh, on. I'm just gonna do one feet to you guys, but that works too. Nope, nope, nope. That's not how it works, man. To you and to everything that you do, man. Have a good Cheers, night. Man. You as well. <laughs>